Alright, this is my Kentucky Derby contenders and pretenders video. What we're gonna do today is talk about some horses, contenders, or pretenders. Uh, we're gonna watch some videos and I'm just gonna tell you my opinions about the race. Now, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this video in one shot, which means I'm probably gonna misspeak. I'm probably going to make some mistakes along the way, but just kind of bear with me. And uh, let's get uh, let's get right to it. First horse we're gonna talk about is Untrapped. Untrapped is the horse that you see here in the past performances at the bottom. I'm actually I'm sort of starting with the bottom, and uh, we're gonna move up, uh, starting with the horses that have. The fewest Kentucky Derby points. But as of today, which is Saturday, April 22nd, are in the Derby. Starting with those those horses, and then we're going to move up. Untrapped is in the Derby right now. If Whether he's going to run or not, still sort of a question. And this horse is a pretender for me. Uh, he's just not... He's just not a winner. If you look at his past performances, I'm going to sort of highlight his finishes. These are the last six races. Or, so he, he finished second, first, second, second, third, sixth. And if you just look at that, you think, well, he's close. But he's just one of these horses that just does not have the heart. Does not have the will to pass horses. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you uh, by playing this video here. Let's see. So Untrapped is the number nine horse. He's sort of this, uh, the jockey's wearing blue silks. So look at what he does in his last race. This is the Arkansas Derby. So I'm just going to play that. I actually have already made a mistake. Okay, so uh, let's see. Hide this. Okay, so he's the number nine horse. Let's play this out. He sneaks up to the front. He's ready. He looks like he's making a good move. About to pass Malagasy and Conquest Mo Money. Gets right next to them. And he has nothing. He either is distance challenged because he is the son of Trap Shot, a sprinter. Or he just doesn't have the heart to pass horses. So, as you as you can see, he kind of fades badly. This is him right here. So this is an easy toss out. So let's move on to the next horse. Next horse is Cloud Computing. This horse, the reason he is a pretender for me, Cloud Computing. No, actually. No, I'm skipping that guy. He's he's out as of today, I believe. I think it was announced today that he's out. So I'm going to uh, move on to Battalion Runner. He is this horse right here. Very lightly raced. Only has four races. And uh, let's see. Battalion Runner, he is fast, but sort of a fast plotter. Which means he just kind of runs fast for most of the race, but he doesn't necessarily have uh, that big burst that you need at the end of the race to uh, to win the Kentucky Derby. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the Wood Memorial. This is the name of the race in in uh, New York. This was his last race. Here he is, the number three horse. And uh, you'll see that he's in the front. This is exactly what I expect to happen in the Kentucky Derby. He should be sort of in front on the pace, as people say, close to the front. And then somebody's going to pass him. Either Irish War Cry or a better horse. Somebody's going to pass him, and he's just going to gonna finish maybe... No, half of the pack or something. So, let's move on. 
There's a lot of horses to cover, so I'm going to be going quickly. Next horse is Patch. This is a horse that is a toss for me. Okay. This horse is even more lightly raced. Even more lightly raced. He has three races. He, these are these three races. In order to win the Derby, you need to have more racing experience than this. You need to have gone through some wars, through some really tough challenges. He's only raced once in a stakes in a stakes race. Stakes races are the highest level of competition in thoroughbred thoroughbred racing. And his last race was in the Louisiana Derby, which I really questioned what was in that race, like the competition. I think my my point of view is that that race was a weak race. Okay, so lightly raced. No shot. This this horse can only win if they give him a head start. So, uh, I'm going to show you the Louisiana Derby. If this thing loads. Okay, so in this race, patches this horse here that I'm sort of highlighting with the arrow, with the black arrow. It's that horse. Watch that horse. He's going to sort of run behind the leaders, sneak into the rail and finish second. And this was actually not really a bad race for him. He had a huge gallop out. But just does not look like the type of horse that's going to win the Kentucky Derby. There's Patch there finishing second. Okay. Now let's move on to... Let's go up to... We're going to jump over to McCracken. McCracken is a horse that that I'm taking a, a very cold... Uh, perspective very hard perspective this is one of the Kentucky Derby favorites was and now he's probably like the fourth or fifth choice a lot of people love him maybe it's the cool name McCracken like they just want to say release the McCracken I don't know what it is but and I actually like them too but his last race was pretty bad and it made me really question made me really question whether He'd been facing good competition. Okay, so let's look at some of his races. He was undefeated before the uh, Bluegrass Stakes. So he won his maiden race, his his very first race. His, typically, horses race in, race in maiden races until they win. Uh, maiden just means that you haven't won okay, in racing. Went to Kentucky. Won three times in, at Churchill Downs. And this is going to be a big reason why people bet this horse. Because they're going to figure he is a what they call horse for course. Horse for, horse for course means that a horse runs really well at a, at a particular track. And they're going to say, well, he loves Churchill Downs. Look at him. And you're probably going to hear in the future that, oh my God, McCracken is training great at Churchill Downs. He loves the track. He's going to win the Kentucky Derby. But really, when once they start looking at his competition, he's he's beat horses like Wild Shot, which is not a very good horse. He beat Taprit in the Sam F. Davis uh, stakes, which that horse ended up not being that that good. State of Honor is another horse that wasn't that good. All right, so this is McCracken. He is uh, the number two horse uh, with the white and red silks. Let's see. Let's play the video. So this is the type of race where it seemed it seemed like there was going to not be a whole lot of pace so they so the jockey Brian Hernandez decided to sort of decided to sort of pull 
to ask McCracken to, to race Ford Lee. So he's the number two horse here with the red silk. So he used some of that some of that early energy in the fourth position by a half length. And which I don't think that McCracken really liked. That's not what he does. He usually comes from way back. He makes one run. But I didn't like this because he may have to do something like this in the derby. Right here, Brian Hernandez decides to kind of give him a break, give him a breather, and he starts backing up. At a certain point, he says, okay, we got to go. So right here, he starts asking him. See the number two? He starts running. So this is his second sort of burst, and I rap here the, the the horse in the lead was a maiden again. McCracken had nothing here, and this was a really disappointing race for McCracken. If he was really the class, you have to catch this horse. You have to catch him and pass these horses. I didn't really like the way that he finished this race. To me, this McCracken was exposed in this race. I just think he's he's been facing weak competition. I don't like that he comes from way back. Uh, I didn't like his last race. To me, he's a toss. And he may beat me, but so be it. All right, let's move on to... Let's see, who do we got next? We got Fast and Accurate. Fast and Accurate. Uh, this is a... So this is the type of horse where you look at the past performances and it looks like he finished second, fourth, fifth, first, first, first. So you think, oh, he's on a winning streak and he's going to be the longest shot on the board. He's going to be something like 50 to 1 or even higher odds than that. And some casual fans are going to say, going to ask themselves, why is this horse such a big long shot? He's been winning lately. Well, when you look at the, when you look at the, track surface he's raced twice on synthetic this a here hopefully you can see this on the video but this these little a's here that stands for all weather meaning that he's been racing on synthetic tracks which are different than dirt tracks they just they just play differently they horse some horses can run really well on synthetic tracks some horses um some some horses are better at synthetic tracks. Some horses are better at dirt tracks. Okay, so he had one dirt start this mile race at Parks. His one lone start on dirt was his worst race. He finished fifth. He finished fifth here by 11 lengths, 11 horse lengths back. So that just kind of tells me this horse is a synthetic horse this is probably going to end up his career probably going to end up being a turf horse okay meaning that he's going to run on grass later on in his career he got he got in this race he got the derby points he's in the derby it's exciting for the for the trainers it's exciting for the owners but this horse has absolutely no shot this is not a dirt horse okay so this is a toss for me i do want to I do want to show you his race. He is the number three horse. I'll play a little bit of it. His name is Fast and Accurate. I don't know what happened here. Hey, let, let's just play the little. Fast let's just play the end way. here. Fast and Accurate, comes to the outside. Fast and Accurate is a Come three horse pilot, here. This. Well along the rail in third. Giant payday. There's Parlor as they run past the quarter pole. So well off the rail. maybe I shouldn't even be showing you this if I think he has no shot. But just look at him physically. Does this horse look like the type of horse is going to win the Kentucky Derby? Come on. Just visually, he just doesn't look like a Kentucky Derby winner. All right. So let's get out of there. I can now get rid of this race. Back to the pretenders. We're going to jump over to Malagasy. Now, Malagasy, I'm a little reluctant to even show you or talk about this video. Because it does look like... Apparently, he's in the derby right now. But... But... 
he they haven't really decided what to do with this horse at this point as of September 22nd. I doubt he's going to go on the derby. Cuz uh he's uh very lightly raced. If you look at his races, he started racing in January, he has four races. And he just looks like a sprinter when he sprints, when he's running in the shorter shorter races, five five and a half furlongs. He's winning by 15 lengths. Six and a half furlongs, he's winning by seven lengths. As the distance gets longer, at a mile and the 16th, he still wins, but not by the same margin as in the sprints. Once he had to go in a mile and an eighth, then he lost. So it looks like this horse probably sort of hits a wall, meaning that uh, at a certain point, he just doesn't want to go that far. He doesn't have the stamina to go along. And let's watch a little bit of the Arkansas Derby. Uh, let's see. So Malagasy is the number 12 horse here. He's back it up a little bit and he ran a pretty good race but he tired badly look at Malagasy's the number 12 horse with the red and green silk so I think this is really the first time that he was in a fight too he had he had a battle conquest more money and conquest more money was a huge long shot he, he couldn't put him away he couldn't pass him here the, the, the announcer says that Malagasy, that Malagasy puts his head in front, but I think he's tripping because Malagasy never got by Conquest more money. He tires badly here. See how he, he just kind of walks the last 16th of the race. So uh, to me, he's a, he's a pretender. We don't even know if he's going to go. He probably, maybe after watching this video, Top Puncher will announce that he's not going. All right, let's go on to Taprit. Let's move on to Taprit here. And I'm trying to do something else as as I'm talking, but... Okay, so Taprit. Also a pretender. One thing that I want to mention about that I think is huge when it comes to the Kentucky Derby is that out of the last... 40 years, last 40 years, the Kentucky Derby winner finished first or second in their last race, okay, in their last prep, before they, they, before they went on to the Kentucky Derby, the horse finished first or second, okay, 85% of the time, that's huge, that's, the other 15% finished worse than second, but they were close at the finish. For example, there's a horse named Mind That Bird. Mind That Bird. He finished fourth in the Sunland Derby, but but he was he was sort of coming. He was he was close. He finished by maybe like behind by two lengths or so. So they finished fourth. Also, Giacomo. Few more more years back, several years back. Also finished fourth, I believe, but he was also close in the Santa Anita Derby. He went on to win the Kentucky Derby. So the point here is you have to have a good last race. You have to have a good last prep, okay? And uh, you have to finish first or second. Tapper finished fifth by 11 lengths. Is it's five by 11 lengths. So I think he is a toss. All right, next we have State of Honor. State of Honor is a typical horse that is, is a, a pace presence. He's going to be near the lead or in the lead. And this is the type of horse that just always gets passed. If you look at his races, these are his. he's had a ton of races already. He's typically in the lead by the end of the race. And always, always, always gets passed. He's won one race. His uh, a maiden race, which is basically he was he was running against a bunch of losers, and he just 
happened to be the winner that day. But in his last and all his other races, he lost. So this is not a not a serious horse. I do want to show you what I mean, though. This is the Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, State of Honor is the number eight horse here in the front. Actually, let me fast forward. I don't know that much. Actually, the backtrack a little bit. So there's State of Honor right here. He's in the lead. He did go a little fast for the race. Gets passed by Tappert, I believe. He does have, he has a ton of heart, but he's just a little, he's just a cut below. In the Kentucky Derby, there's going to be about half of the field is going to pass him. The type of horse is going to finish, maybe. Maybe half, maybe in the middle of the track somewhere. All right, let's move on to what do we got here. J Bo is Echo. J Bo is Echo is a, is a uh, he's he's the type of horse, one of these horses that I typically, at least in the last few years, I hate this this type of horse because he's been prepping in the weakest Kentucky Derby preps. He's been training and training and running in New York. But in the races like the Withers and the and the Gotham, some of the weakest races for the Kentucky Derby, and he hasn't really won a whole lot of races either. He's just not much. He should be a huge long shot. Just doesn't do it. He's a pretender. You can toss him. Let me see if I can show you a little bit of a little bit of J Boy Zeko. He is. He ran on the bluegrass stakes. So you're gonna, I think he finishes fourth here. Let's see if we can see him. Um, okay, so. Taprit fourth on the outside. J Boy Zeko in fifth. Here's McCrack. J Boy Zeko, I believe, is this horse here that I'm trying to. Where my cursor is. This was a, a very strong race, and he finished fourth in this race, so. In the Kentucky Derby, they need to give him a huge head start for him to win. There's no way. All right, let's move on to Practical Joke. Practical Joke is a horse that I'm going to differ in opinion with a lot of other people. To me, he's a hanger. By that, I mean that. Well, maybe it's better to illustrate this with a video. Let's watch the Fountain of Youth stakes. I believe it's this one. Okay. I want you to see what Practical Joke does in this race. Let's see. Practical Joke is the... He's the... Let's see. Fountain of Youth. He's the number five horse. Let's see, let's play this video here. The Peruvian has lost the ball through an opening half mile in 47 seconds flat. Three rules, bumps the margin to a length and a quarter. Irish war cry is in no hurry yet, he's racing second. Tackleful at the inside third, Major Look has fallen off the mark fourth. Here's Practical Joke moving sharply. Practical Joke giving the green light, he's into fourth. He's four lengths off the lead. And he's Actually, he's the sixth horse here. Right now, Practical Joke. After the leader, okay, this is what I want you to look. See, all in, not responding. The jackpot. this is what the horse is going to do. He's a six-word. He's in second place right now. He makes a pretty big move. He catches the seven, and then he just kind of parks there. He just kind of hangs out next to this horse. A hanger is a type of horse that just kind of hangs on to the leader. He just kind of lingers. He just kind of hangs on there like a bad girlfriend. Like a, Just kind of hangs on to, to the leader. And check out what he does after he, somebody passes him, eventually Gunnavera is going to pass him. Check out what he does. Gunnavera is in full stride for Javier Castellano as they race to the top of the stretch in the Fountain of Youth. Okay. And there goes Practical he, Joke. Right there, he catches three rules. And that's it. He doesn't pass him. Why aren't you passing this horse? He's just kind of hanging out there. Okay, now Gunnavera passes him. So now he's like, oh, wait, now there's a horse in front of me, so I guess I got to go chase that horse. Now he moves away from three rules. Or he tries to. So there's one thing, one 
negative thing about Practical Joke. He's also by uh, Into Mischief. Into Mischief usually... He's the sire, the dad. He, he sort of produces horses that are milers. The most famous one was Golden Sense. He was a Breeders' Cup mile winner. So there's an, I, another thing that I notice about him is that I believe okay, that he's a, he has distance limitation and there's no way that he's going to go a mile and a quarter. Okay, so And the reason I say that too is because I've, I've watched his gallop out in the last three races after the finish light. I want to see how much energy he had. And he's nowhere to be seen in the gallop out videos. You can see you can do this on your own. Just not there. He just kind of stops. So I think he has uh, distance limitations. For me, he's a pretender. I'm going to toss him. Let's move on to Always Dreaming. This is a horse that he's going to be one of the favorites, one of the top choices. Actually, I should say one of the top choices. I guess this is where I talk about. Top Ledger's Kentucky Derby record, and I always do this every year. Every year I say, oh, so now he's, Todd Pletcher is the trainer. He's won four, he's won one Kentucky Derby out of, I have that data here, one out of 45. One out of 45 is pretty bad. And I know you're going to hear a lot of people make excuses about his record, but it's not just for one for 45. He is terrible at getting horses to go a mile and a quarter at Churchill Downs. Okay. He's also I I did my own sort of uh analysis investigation a couple years back because I wanted to find out where Pletcher's horses were finishing in the Derby, not just simply first, second, or third. I want to say, where, where are they finishing? And I noticed that most of his, most of his horses really underperform. They're finishing in the middle of the, sort of in you know tenth, fifth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth pace. That that's generally where they finish up. A lot of them finish, finish uh, towards the towards the the back. Um, finished last, second to last, third to last. So here the point is that his horses really underperform in the Kentucky Derby. I don't know what it is. I can't really explain it, but I I'm gonna toss on always dreaming, although he looked really good in the Florida Derby and he had a monster gallop out, which makes me think that he's gonna go he can distance is not really a question, but I I'm I'm just going to be stubborn and say he's a toss. So let's watch the Florida Derby. Florida Derby. So let's see. Always dreaming. I think. No, this isn't the video. I think I have. I think I have way too many tabs out. Okay, so this is uh, always dreaming. He's the number four. I think he's going to be the second or third choice in the Derby. He's the number four horse here. So the Florida Derby has been a very productive race for the Kentucky Derby. A lot of horses have used this race as a last prep to win the Kentucky Derby. And he just kind of explodes here. And he wins. Looks good doing it. Is one of the fastest preps on raw time. Has a huge monster gallop out. Another thing about always dreaming is that I think he may bounce. I don't know what it is about Gulfstream Park where he raced last, but I feel like it tends to produce a lot of bounces. And this is my own crazy theory. Okay, but anyway, I think he may bounce. And I'll explain the bounce later on. All right, so let's move on to Thunder Snow. Thunder Snow is a the UAE Derby winner, and he won the this race in Dubai, and uh, he got into 
the Kentucky Derby because whoever wins that race gets 100 points for the Kentucky Derby. So he's in. Second place is in, but he's not coming. Epicharis. So Thunder Snow, this is just the horse where I'm going to go back to the history of this race. Horses that win the UAE Derby and race in the Kentucky Derby do very, very poorly. The best they've ever done is like a fourth place. But you can't really entertain these type of horses. They're usually inferior dirt horses that win that derby, that win that UAE Derby. So, good horse, has a future on turf, but he's just not one. I, I got really excited about Muftahish last year. He won the uh, UAE Derby, and I said, oh, I'm going to make an excuse this year. Ended up finishing like fifth or fourth. I forgot now. But anyway, he was not really uh, um, as good as I thought he was compared to the American horses. But I do want to show you his race. Let's see. I think it's this one here. Thunder Snow is the number uh, 13 horse here with the blue silks. So this is just the end of that race. This is the UAE Derby. This is the Japanese horse, Epicharis. Kind of is getting tired there. Starts drifting out a little bit. Does have a ton of heart. Somehow, some way, gets his nose in front at the end. So, good horse. Not for me in the Derby. He's a pretender. Let's move on to IRAP. So, for IRAP, I need to go all the way back to the Bluegrass Stakes, which is this one, I believe. Nope, this one. Actually, let's go back to IRAP. So Irap is a horse that he's trained by Doug O'Neill. Mario Gutierrez is the the jockey, and these this combination has won two of the last four Kentucky Derbies. They won last year with Nyquist. They won four years ago, five years ago with. I'll have another. I don't know, but that's not the point. They've they've won this. They've done this before. And they won the Bluegrass last in their last race. That was probably, that was IRAP's Kentucky Derby. He had a huge effort. He had a monster effort. But things kind of went his way. There wasn't a whole lot of pace in the race. Kind Just kind of lingered in the front. And then uh, just kind of outran, at, outran everybody at the end. He's a toss for me. He's not, not somebody that you should take seriously. Of course, now that I said that, he's probably going to win the Kentucky Derby. But anyway, to me, he's a toss. He is a pretender. He's just this, this type of horse that just kind of, he runs well, but in the biggest race at the biggest stage, I just, I don't really think he has a shot. He just, visually, he just hasn't done it for me. I do want to go back to the, uh, Bluegrass Stakes and show you who this horse is. He is the, let's see, actually, he's the number six horse. He's in front right now. So, I rep is the six horse with the, the jockeys wearing the white silks, white and purple silks. The jockey for this race was actually Julian Leperu, and he's, he's a really good rider. In Kentucky, not as good in other places, in my opinion. Here's Practical Joka, the hanger that I talked about earlier, hanging again. So, no shot, toss him. Uh, let's move on to Gormley. This is a horse that I really like, in general. But I think we have to talk about the bounce. Let's... Let's see, he's, and um, I think people believe that the bounce just sort of means one thing, but there's different types of bounces. There's horses that that just have a, uh, a huge effort, an unusual big effort that underperform in their less, and in, in their next race, they regress. And just don't really have a, a good race. 
in after a big race. This is a horse that I believe, I may be wrong about this, but he's sort of established this pattern already where he runs a huge race, underperforms in the following race. So, for example, he in October, he ran a huge race. He won the front runner stakes at Zemnita. Then he, in the British Cup Juvenile, he bounced. He finished 7th, 16th lengths back. Then he comes back this year in January. He, he runs a huge race in the Sham. Runs a huge race. Then comes back a couple months later and bounces. Runs a, gives a port effort in the San Felipe. Okay. Finishes fourth, ninth lengths back. And I remember after that race, I after that race, I'm, I'm on Twitter and I said he's going to run a huge race in, in his next race because he's sort of ha having this sort of bouncy pattern, and he did. He won the San Anita Derby. He has a huge effort again in the San Anita Derby. Finishes first. I know that people are going to say, well, the track, uh, the the final, the time of the race was slow, but he got a good speed figure. On oh, Speed figures are just sort of a this crazy mathematical formula is used to determine how fast really a horse ran because the track sort of changes day to day, month to month, and sometimes the track is really fast, sometimes the, sometimes the track is really slow depending on the surface and the moisture. Anyway, that's another video. But so the raw time was slow, but he got a good figure with. Brisnet with Equibase too. I noticed Equibase. I'm I'm usually an Equibase figure guy. Did really well there, and I just think he bounces. He bounces the his his pattern is that he bounces in the Kentucky Derby. But I do want to show you um the Santa Anita Derby. Okay, so this is the Santa Anita Derby. Gormley is. Let me back it up here. Uh, Gormley is is the second horse here with the the Zenyatta silks with these. The pink and the, I don't know what this color is. What color is this? Is this teal? It's sort of a, anyway, he's this horse. He's the number eight horse. Raced a little bit different. I, I imagine this is what they're going to do. They're going to try to race and try to kind of race maybe mid-pack. So there's there's Gormley. Victor's fight. Uh, Gormley's fighting, fighting to, to sort of pass these horses. Does a good job, finishes. Passes these horses. Finishes and wins the race. Again, I think this is pretty predictable that he was going to run a big race. And it's pretty predictable that he's going to run a poor race in the Kentucky Derby. If I'm wrong, um, I'll be really happy for Gormley because I actually really like this horse. And, and I think he's going to, if he does bounce in the Kentucky Derby and they send him to the Preakness, he'll probably run big in the Preakness because that's kind of his pattern. And then... Maybe he'll change some as as. All right, next we got Irvin, Irvin, Gervin, which is the last of my tosses, my pretenders. So he's been a pretty nice horse, but he's lightly raced. I kind of question the competition that he's been facing, particularly because he beat Untrapped by two lengths. And Untrapped didn't really flatter him when he went out to Oakland Park and finished 5th or 6th or something like that. So he's a pretty nice horse. I think he's going to develop into a nice horse later in his career. But I, I, don't, I don't like him for the Derby. I want to show you a little bit of his race. The other thing that I don't like about him, and I think... Uh, we'll show it here. He's the number eight horse here. Let's see. Let's Midpoint play this. Getting up to speed on the outside. One thing that I don't like is that he sort of makes his move a little bit late. I want a horse making his move right here. At this point, I want I want a horse that's making his move and is already close to the lead. Gervin is here. He's the number eight horse. He's still 
about where he where you need him to be, but it takes him a while to pass that that horse on the lead, which I forgot his name. I think it's local hero or something like that. So there's Gervin. He's trying. He's trying this little hard out, but it takes him a while to pass this horse. There he is. He passes the horse. Hatch is coming on the rail. Pretty good horse. He actually has a really nice gallop out too. Good horse. Not for me. I'm just making a judgment call. He may end up finishing in the money, but... And speaking of the money, now we're going to move on to the horses that I think are capable of finishing in the money, meaning third or second. That are not necessarily win candidates for me, but I think there's a chance that they may run a good race. And especially at big odds, most of these horses, I think, are going to be long shots and huge long shots. Starting with. So let's, let's go down here um, to looking at Lee. As of today, April 22nd, he's not in the Derby. But I do expect some defections, maybe Malagasy, maybe somebody else. Maybe, unfortunately, by the time you're watching this video, somebody got injured and looking at Lee gets in the Derby. So initially, when I looked at looking at Lee, I thought, no, this horse, he comes from way out of it. He seems to sort of get himself into – he does something really strange. In those last two races, he, he has huge holes, but he's not – He's not um, blasting through those holes. He kind of starts leaning in towards horses and finding traffic trouble. And then he finishes off, finish off, finishes off his races really well. But so initially I didn't like him. Then he started kind of growing on me. I looked at his races and he's running in a lot of big races. And... He's running second, third to really good horses like Classic Empire, like Malagasy, uh, etc. So he's always coming, and he always seems to find himself in second, third in these big races like the Breeders' Cup Futurity. Uh, Breeders' Futurity he finished second the Classic Empire. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile he finished fourth, which is was it, which isn't that great, but I mean he's a He's one that you might want to use in, in the Superfecta, top four, top three. In the Arkansas Derby, he finished third, and that was probably his best race. It seems like he's getting a little bit better. This horse is going to be a huge long shot, and I think he's usable. So let me show you here. Let's go to the Arkansas Derby. Looking at Lee. He's third on trapped is right after him. The champion. So looking at Lee's the fifth, but he's only two from the front. Then comes is the Lee. number is at the rail what is it? The top number of the six horse? He's if you can see my cursor, he's coming here. He's making his move. There he is. Untrapped is only so he's still far behind. Classic Empire two and a half to and, uh, conquest Mo Money and Malagasy kind of right together to the outside and untrapped. Ducks into towards the rail. Now, why doesn't he just explode? He has a, a lot of room. Now he finds another hole, but he's not blasting through again. Come on. And it's not the jockey because he's had two different jockeys last two races. So finishes off well, has a huge gallop out. Big long shot, possibly gets in the money. Okay, next horse we're going to talk about. Next horse I'm going to talk about. I'm doing something that I hate when people do. Speak in plural. When... All right, so uh, next horse that I'm going to talk about is Battle of Midway. Where's Battle of Midway? So this is a another lightly... Lightly raced horse, and he's also the horse that a horse that just started racing this year. So this is the time where I talk about the Curse of Apollo. Curse of Apollo says that horses that do not have a two-year-old foundation, meaning that they didn't run at the age of two, are usually not 
They don't. They haven't had the. They don't have the foundation. They don't have the the racing experience to do well in the Kentucky Derby in a big race, going long with a lot of horses, with twenty horses, big crowds. They don't have the racing experience. They don't have the uh, to do well in the Kentucky Derby. This horse, I'm willing to make a little bit of an exception because he's looked really good in his last few races. I'm going to show you the Santa Anita Derby. So this is the Santa Anita Derby. He's the number three. He's the number three. He, he took the lead in this horse, and he went really fast. He normally doesn't normally doesn't go this fast. Maybe it was uh, his jockey that decided to do this. I was a little confused as to why he went to the lead. But anyway, he set the pace, goes really fast, and he should have just stopped around here. He should have just hit a wall, stopped, and let a whole bunch of horses pass him. But he keeps fighting. He's He's got a ton of heart. I think it's possible that he could run a good race, maybe like firing line of a couple of years ago. Maybe finish second, third. It's possible. So you can see he finishes second. He gets beat, but he run, he runs a good race. All right, next horse. Next horse is Gunavera. Let's go find Gunavera. So Gunavera was a horse that I didn't like after his last race, but he seems to sort of follow a pattern where he has a let's see, let's look at this. He runs a really good race. He ran. Um, he won the Saratoga Special. Then he ran poorly in the Breeders' Cup Futurity. He ran. He finished fifth. Then he won the Delta Downs Jackpot. His next race wasn't as good. He finished second. Then he won the Fountain of Youth. And then the Florida Derby, predictably, didn't run as well. So it seems like he wins one race, does poorly. Wins one race, does poorly in the next one. Wins one race, does poorly in the next, in the next one. So his pattern is that he should run a good race in the Kentucky Derby. We'll see. I Let's watch. This was probably, to me, this was a, a winning move for Gunnar. He comes from way out of it. This is the Delta Downs jackpot. This is sort of, for a closer, this is sort of the move, move you want to see. He comes from way out of it. Doesn't close into a not necessarily a fast pace. Goes around all these horses, makes a huge move, and wins this race. So let's watch this. Norman on the inside. I believe he's the number six making a move here. Down along the inside here is Balandine, this comes from way back. Goes around a ton of horses. There's Gunavera. Catches the leader. Passes him. If the... All right, got three more horses to talk about. To me, these are the real contenders. Okay, so I'm going to... First, I'm going to talk about a horse named Hens. He's probably going to be a big prize. And everybody seems to thought or thought that... This was one of those years where maybe a big long shot would win. The horses were pretty inconsistent. There's no perfect horse. A lot of there's a lot of bouncy horses, a lot of horses that have underperformed, have had setbacks, have had injuries, have had some races that are just head scratchers. So if that happens, if there is a a big long shot to win to win that wins the Kentucky Derby to me, I think it might be Hens. Okay, maybe I'm crazy. I probably am crazy, but this horse is by Steve Asmussen, a very good trainer. He's never won the Derby, but he's a good trainer. Uh, the pedigree. I'm going to talk a little bit about the pedigree. Here's Street Boss, 
Street Boss was mostly a sprinter, but he did produce a horse named Danza. Danza finished a pretty good third a couple of years back in the Kentucky Derby. But what I like is that this is a horse by a um, the mother's dad is a was a horse named AP and the AP and the was a monster. He's produced a ton of really good horses, and he was he's sort of this this horse that passes on a lot of stamina influences to other horses. So I think he gets a lot of stamina from from his mother's side. Now, one thing, that, another thing that I want to talk about in this, for this race, for this horse, is this idea of a key race. This horse raced in the Sunland Derby, and typically, this is a Grade Three. It's not a, it's not a race that's very respected. It's not a race that is highly regarded. So I think a lot of people may discount him because of that, but. The horses that ran behind them, there's a horse named there's a horse named Conquest Mo Money. That horse ran in the Arkansas Derby and finished a really good second. Probably should have won that race. Almost the horse that finished second almost won a grade one race. Okay, the horse that finished third. The horse that finished third was a horse named Hedge Fund. And that horse Ran in the Illinois Derby actually today. I just watched it a few minutes ago, and he finished a really good second. Got beaten by about a half, about a neck, I think, something like that. But anyway, he ran a really good race too. Almost won the the Illinois Derby. Then the horse that finished fourth was a horse named Irap. Irap went on to win the Bluegrass Stakes, which was at the time it was considered the the race with the highest quality of race horses, maybe not so much anymore. But anyway, so there's this idea that at this time it seems to have been the Sunland Derby is kind of a keyish race. Maybe in the future we'll all uh, make a determination that it wasn't. But as of now, to me, this is a key race. So I'm gonna show you Hans. Hans is a He's way back here. He's this horse. I'm going to highlight him. He's this horse here. Sort of mid-packish. Makes a big move. Goes around all these horses. This is the kind of move that wins the Kentucky Derby too. When a closer wins the Kentucky Derby, this is the kind of move that you see. Look at this move. This is really impressive, even for the Sunland Derby. Catches the leader. Conquest more money. Mo Money ran a huge race here. Went pretty fast. Went 22 for the first quarter. 45 seconds. Second quarter. Ran a huge race here. Hence catches him. Had a little trouble going past him, but eventually does. So anyway, if a big long shot wins... And really, the last time a big long shot won the Kentucky Derby was mind that mind that bird who ran in the in the Sunland Derby last. So that's hence. Let's move on to the favorite is going to be the favorite for this race is going to be Classic Empire. Classic Empire is a really good horse. He has the breeding. His dad was pioneer of the Nile, who produced the uh, Triple Crown winner, American Pharaoh, a couple years ago. So, no question, he's going to he's going to like the distance. I mean, American Pharaoh won a race at a mile and a quarter. So, I don't think stamina is going to be a question for him. His issues have been way, way overblown. Like that he's uh, stubborn and doesn't want to train. There's all these little rumors and gossip. Every horse has little issues like that. Don't. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna get dissuaded by by those kinds of things. So this is the only horse that is a that's a three time Grade One winner, the highest quality of races in in American racing, or Grade One races. 
was the won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, was the Eclipse champion two-year-old. He is the best of the crop. He, he only has one blemish. After a layoff, he, he lost the Holy Bowl. He didn't really look that, that good in that race, but I think he's building up to a, to, a, to a climax. I think he's going to peak in the Kentucky Derby. He's the favorite. He's the most likely winner, to be honest with you. Uh, let's watch the replay. So Conquest, Classic Empire is sort of mid-pack here. Well, kind of forwardly placed, stalking, with, uh, surrounded by a ton of horses. He has the yellow sick silks here. Hey dude, followed by looking at Lee, the maiden sonnet sort of in between horses. This is exa exactly what he's going to experience in the Kentucky Derby. He's going to be in between horses. Kind of buys his time, which is perfect because they're going a little fast in front of him. The jockey, Julian LaPeru, did a great job just... Being patient, knowing that they're going too fast, which I'm not a big fan of this jockey, to be honest with you. I think he doesn't always do a good job, but here he does. He's being patient. This is where he asks Classic Empire to start running, and Classic Empire responds. He starts chasing them down and eventually passes. Conquest Mo Money and Malagasy wins the race. Grade one Arkansas Derby. A really good prep. This is another prep that hasn't produced a ton of Kentucky Derby winners, but it has produced a lot of horses that have performed well in the Kentucky Derby over the last five years or so. So he's the favorite, should be the favorite, likeliest winner. But I'm going to talk about. Irish work right. He is my pick. He's my pick, even though he raced last in the Wood Memorial. That's a prep that I hate. And if you see, if you've seen my videos for the last couple of years, last two years, you know that I hate the Wood Memorial. But I think he doesn't have that stink of the New York horses that train there. He just they kind of just shipped them into to race in that race. He's by Curlin, who. Uh, finished third in the Kentucky Derby. He won. He won, finished second in the Bel really close second in the Belmont Stakes, which is a mile and a quarter race. I don't think the, uh, distance is going to be an issue. His trainer Grand Mo Motion has won this race before. To me, he just has. He just passes the eye test. He just looks really good, really professional. Doesn't waste a lot of energy. And to me, the most impressive race by him was the Holy Bull. He takes the lead. Back fourth is Gunavera, then Cavill, four lengths to Pero Rojo. He's in the lead here. He's the number five horse. Takes the lead, takes command of this race, and there's a lot of, there's several really good horses in here, including the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, Classic Empire, and the Kentucky Derby favorite. Takes the lead, takes command of this, of this race, and just explodes at the end. Classic Empire here is the number three horse. Gunavera is the number eight horse here. Okay, so at this point, he just ex 